to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. I always like that verse. I always, I always say this. I'm always reminded of that. He's writing to all the saints, every Christian, and he's writing to the faithful. So not all the saints are faithful. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. He's blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Somebody said, well, I don't need, I, I need uh, some earthly blessings. Well, that earthly blessings come from the, spirit, the spiritual blessing. Right. Amen. Amen. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us into the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. I've had people ask me questions through the years about predestined. Predestination. A lot of times people think predestination means that God has chosen who, who he's going to bless and who he's not going to bless. He's chosen who he's going to save and who he's not going to save. And some are predestined to go to hell and some are predestined to be saved. Well, that's not what they, who he's talking about here. The word predestined does mean predetermined, but he predetermines something else. Not who would be saved and who would who he bless and all these different things. He predetermined us to be conformed. Everybody that would come to Jesus, he has, verse 5 said, he predestinated us into the adoption of children. He predestinated us to be adopted in the, by ch uh, uh, of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise and glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Now let, let's read on with a bit. In whom we have redemption, through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. All of it. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will. According to his good pleasure which he had purposed in himself. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times. So we know there's, there's a time when, when time is up. And time will be no more. He might gather together in one all things in Christ. Both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Notice verse 11. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who work of all things after the counsel of his will. So he predestinated us to, to obtain an inheritance through Christ Jesus. All that will come to him will get what the Lord Jesus Christ has. We have inherited everything the Lord Jesus Christ has. All that he is... All that he is, we've inherited his inheritance. And that's a wonderful thing. So we've been predestinated. He predestinated everybody that will come to Jesus to be conformed to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's, that's what he, and he predestinated you to be adopted as children. Every one of us are adopted. None of, none of the former Gentiles were the original. The, the original were the one, the, the, the Hebrew children whom, uh, of Seed of Abraham, whom God gave the oracles to. These are the original. These are the olive tree. We have been adopted into the original as, you know, as children of God. All different colors of people. I don't, I don't like to, I try not to use the word racist of people because there's only one race. Amen. And all the white people want to continue to use the race. It's only one race is a race of man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. and, 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 and well, I, I, can, I can say two races. That's a race of man and a race of the children of God. <laughs> <laughs> those, those that belong to the Lord. That's the other race. But as far as different colors of people, different colors of skin, there's only one race. And that's the race of mankind. Amen. Which God made all from one blood. Amen. And God is not born. He likes different colors. Amen. <laughs> like me, I like different colors. That's right. I like I like different colors. Green, black, red, yellow. I like all kinds of them. I wear all different colors. Because I like different colors. And sometimes people talk about me because I have a certain color. I'm like, that ain't work for you. I work for me. I like different colors. And God didn't make it for you. He made it for himself. He made everything he said it was good. 
Yeah. Didn't he? He enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what it is. It's only one race of Adam, that's the human race. Yeah. And so we're just different shades of the race. Yeah. So we have been predestined. God predetermined that all that will come to the Lord Jesus Christ will be conformed to his image and will receive his inheritance. So we have an inheritance. Not when we die, not when we go to heaven, we have an inheritance right now. Our inheritance came when he died, not when we died. Amen. 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 So you inherited your, you sh we, sh we should be enjoying our inheritance now as much of it as we can. Yeah. We can't enjoy all of it because all of it is not given to us now. But we got a foretaste of a lot of things. But pretty soon the fullness will be manifested. And so that's basically what the word predestined means. Uh, to be conformed to his image. You can find it all through the scriptures. I'm not using all the scriptures that is that speaks of it tonight, but it's in there. So when you see the word predestined, don't think that you've been predetermined to be saved and others have been predetermined to be lost. Mm -hmm. Judas wasn't even predetermined to be lost. Mm -hmm. he, he, he chose that way. Sure. And God used it for his purpose, but that was Judas' choice. Mm -hmm. God didn't create Judas and predestined him to be uh, uh, lost. Scripture called him the son of perdition. That was his choice. Yeah. God didn't create Lucifer to be the devil. He created him as an archangel and anointed him. Mm -hmm. The anointed chair. He chose that way. Amen. And so when people choose that way, they've been predetermined to go where the one is, the devil. Mm -hmm. And so all that would choose Jesus were predetermined to be with the Lord and receive his inheritance. Thank God. Amen. We have an inheritance. Yes. And our inheritance is Jesus because of what Jesus has done, what he is, what he's what he is. <clears throat> We have inherited all of him. So he said, Paul said, we pray, God, as we understand and be open and enlightened. That we may know. Now, I wanted to say a little bit about predestination, but I want to say a little bit about uh, another particular subject, which we'll somehow put it all together. Turn with me to John chapter 1. St. John chapter 1. John, the first chapter. And... Let me say this. I heard uh, I, I, I heard it said that we've been we've been delivered from the old covenant. We have children of God have been delivered from the old covenant, but I, I, I kind of think that the fellow that said it kind of worded it. It could have worded it a little better. I didn't like the way that was worded. Because we've not been delivered from the old covenant, we've never worked part of it. To be delivered from it. <laughs> we weren't just part of the law, we didn't have a covenant period. The Gentiles didn't. Amen. Had no covenant. Mm -hmm. You think about that. Mm -hmm. The Gentiles had no covenant. Period. Mm -hmm. Our covenant is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That's how we got included. We've been predestined. That's how God predestined it. He told Abraham, he said, this message to you and your seed. Mm -hmm. So, the seed being Christ. And until faith come, the Galatians said, until Christ came, we had no covenant. Period. Amen. Nothing Amen. to deliver from. So we don't need to get caught up in the old covenant because we never had an old covenant. We never were involved in that. Now we could take some things from it. People could get blessed from it by blessing Abraham. I mean, you could get in on the blessing of Abraham if you, if you, in that day, even though they had no covenant, even Gentiles could get in on it if they blessed Abraham. Because God promised that. And some of them did. A lot of them did get, up, get blessed because they were a blessing to Abraham. God's covenant man. And we can see where, uh, and when you read the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews, you see where several people got involved in it that were covenant people. Mm -hmm. And then when, and, and, isn't that right? Mm -hmm. But that they had no covenant. Jesus told them, they, he told them they had no covenant. That's he said, right. I come to the people of God. Yes. Or the children of Israel. But they got in. So when you think about the old covenant, you have to think, you have to remember, you never was part of it in the first place. Not just the Ten Commandments, you weren't part of the covenant period. Amen. 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 Are you following me? Yes. All right. Let, let, hold your spot right there. Let me back it up. Some of you looking like I made it up. Hold your spot right there and tell me to Ephesians, the first chapter, or the second chapter. We'll be coming back in four. So I'm, I'm, I want you to be free from that law and all that kind of stuff and realize that you weren't just, 
The Ten Commandments weren't just for you. None of it was for none of us. You weren't in it on any of it. Amen. You just like Goliath. Mm. <laughs> Uncircumcised. <laughs> no covenant. <laughs> Amen. 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 Okay, you got Ephesians the second chapter? Yes. Let's begin reading verse number eight. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Now he's talking, he's talking to covenant people now, children of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus under good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore, remember, so everybody remember, that you men in time past Gentiles, you're not a Gentile anymore, you were in time past, and the people back then were. Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh, made by hands. That at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise. Mm -hmm. Amen. Having no hope and without God in the world. Mm -hmm. You see, Gentiles never were involved in the first place. It was children of Israel. Amen. You see that? So I, I don't know. We've been we've been trained wrong through the years to think that we we never was under the old covenant. <laughs> we can use some things out of the old covenant. We can learn from it and and and, and get some blessings from it. Mm -hmm. And some of it speaks to the future, to Abraham and to his seed, mm -hmm. which is Christ. It speaks to the future. That's the only place I've been able to find anything dealing with us, mm -hmm. dealing with uh, farmer Gentiles. Amen. Amen. So I, I, I'm free from the old stuff. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I'm free from performance. I'm living under grace. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank you. <laughs> you play with that? Yeah. I'm free from that. I'm never, I never was under in the first place. <laughs> well, I'm going to go in there now. Amen. Now that I'm free from it. Amen. So he said at that time you were with no covenant, uncircumcised in the flesh, made by hands. Had no covenant. Well, uh, our, our circumcision now is not of the flesh, it's of the heart. Amen. Amen. Scripture tells us that. So we don't get circumcised under that old covenant. Those people in the old covenant, they got their sign, their, the sign of their covenant was circumcision of the flesh. That's the sign God gave. And under this new covenant, we are circumcised in the heart, in the spirit. The scripture said those that are Jews are not those that are circumcised uh, in the flesh under this new covenant, it's the circumcision of the heart. There's a cut in your spirit that the spirit world can see mm -hmm. that you're a covenant person. Those devils have no insight. They can see that Paul was of God. <laughs> they can see that spirit world. They can see that cut on him. It'd be the same way in the natural. If you if you if you weren't covered up, you could see the cut of the flesh. On covenant people. Of, of the old. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But if we're under the new. The circumcision of the spirit, the spirit world knows who you are. Yes. It's just us don't know who we are. <laughs> but we're learning who we are. Yes, Amen. Amen. Now, let me, let me see if I can find the scripture to back that up. I believe, I'm, I, believe I can find one in Romans. Well, let me see. Let, let, let me keep reading. Let me keep reading this right here. Wherefore, remember, verse 11, that you've been in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. but now, yes. <laughs> now, yes. wake up. You're in the covenant. But now in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were far off are made near by the blood of Christ. Amen. For he is our peace who has broken, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for the making himself a two, one new man, so making peace. Amen. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. Mm -hmm. And came and preached peace to you which were far off. Mm -hmm. Came and preached peace between you and God. Mm -hmm. 
You know, all of us Gentiles that were far off. We're not Gentiles anymore now. He said, remember, you were Gentiles, but not anymore. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Amen. <laughs> See, now the time you're a stranger and foreigner from the covenants of promise, but not anymore. Now you have a covenant. And you got in that covenant through the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He is your peace. He's the one that made peace between you and God, between us and God, between the Gentiles and God. He's not talking about peace among men. That ain't, that, that ain't going to happen on, on yet, not yet. Man, there's so much stuff going on. we got to pray for our nation, pray for our leaders. That they'll preach peace among everybody. And some kind of harmony. <laughs> so, now you are no more a stranger and foreigner, but fellow citizen with the saints of the household of God. Amen. And we have to pray because every person's lust for power, man's lust for power doesn't care what they do. That's right. Amen. Amen. Man's desire to rule over other men doesn't, doesn't, don't care what they do. So we have to pray for those in authority and everything. Amen. And those are trying to get in authority. Amen. Amen. The right ones. Righteous rule and people rejoice. Amen. Yeah. This Bible says. Amen. So we are praying for that. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and with the household of God. It just thrills me. I'm not a stranger and a foreigner anymore. God has accepted me. I am a covenant man. Yeah. I have a covenant. Yes. And it's through the Lord Jesus Christ. And because of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have entered into a covenant. Yeah. That's what God preordained, predestined. For us, the children of God. Now, I believe in Romans. Yeah, let's look at Romans chapter 9. I hadn't forgot about John 1 yet. <laughs> let's look at Romans chapter 9. And we'll look at verse number 7. Neither be called they are the seed of Abraham, or they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are of the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. For this is the word of promise. At this time when I come, and Sarah shall have a son. Not all the children of Abraham are children of God. Not all the seed of Abraham are the children of God. It's just one line through Isaac shall the seed be. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That like, for instance, my father has sons, but say he chose, uh, say he chose Perry, God chose Perry for the seed to come through, the promise to come through. Even though we're the seed of my father, we're not the seed of the promise. And with God, mm -hmm. even though we're the seed of my father, we're not the children of God. In Isaac. But we can get in on it mm -hmm. by receiving mm -hmm. Amen. the Lord Jesus Christ. So not all of Israel, not all the seed of Abraham are the children of God. It's through Isaac the children of God come. Mm -hmm. And through Isaac, the Lord Jesus Christ comes. Mm -hmm. Jesus answers the question, hey Jesus, your mother and your father, your mother and your brother and want you outside. He stops and says, who is my mother and my right. brother and my sister? Yeah. Didn't he? He said, but they only do the will of my father. They're my father. They're my sister and my brother. Yes, they he even said that about his own mother. That's right. Yeah. Glory. He said, who is my mother? But they only do the will of my father. Yes. See, so through the Lord Jesus Christ, even though his brethren, which they all came in, but they weren't considered until they came in as children of God. Even though they... Where's his brother? And then the question came up. I've always had a little itch in my, I've always had a little itch in my, I'm going to de de make a detour right here. It's always been a little itch in my study for, for the years. I never gave a lot of thought. But through the years, just through the years, and I was studying the lineage of Jesus and, and the promise that God made that through David would come the seed. Through David would come the seed, the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, 
Here we go through David. Now, that man, every man on TV the other day, I'm telling you, he blessed me. He, now I got my answer. He liked me. And uh, I like that. Not that I don't get that very often. <laughs> but he liked me. And he said, he said when he, he went to Israel, so anybody here? Well, I'll tell you that. He said he went, he went to uh, Israel years ago, many years ago. And he was broke. He had $10 to his name. He was broke, had no place to stay and everything. And he saw an ad that said, that offered $10,000 to the man, anybody that could prove that the Lord Jesus Christ, through the American Bible, King James Version, American Bible, that the Lord Jesus Christ came through or was, did or did come through the lineage of David. And you can't prove it from this Bible. Mm. And so he asked, he had 10 questions. He asked, he had 10 questions. He said it took him a week to answer the first nine, then it took him 17 years to answer the last one. <laughs> wow. He could you, you can't prove that he came from the lineage of, of David through, through this Bible. It's not in there. Because the Bible says from Abraham to the carrying away of Babylon was 14 generations, from the carrying away of Babylon to Jesus was 14 generations. But then the generations cut off there in the study of this Bible. You can't find it. He said it took him 17 years to find it. And all the way he found it, he had to go back through, talk to Jewish rabbis and go back through the Bible, there, uh, go back to the original that uh, Matthew wrote in Hebrew and then translate, then turn to Arabic and then to Greek and then to, uh, then to uh, the English Bible. But it's not in the English Bible. So he couldn't prove it. So it took him 17 years to do all that tracking down and then he was able to prove it. And so I, I, it, it was it, it's, it was right. It was right. Because it always sort of, I, I talked to Brother Daniel about it. He said, he never thought about it. I, I, you probably never. But things like that kind of grab it me a little bit. I said, no, Lord, you got to show me this. That was years ago. And finally, I got to ask. <laughs> <laughs> this guy had studied it out, you know. And uh, make a long story short, he tracked it down through the different translations, whereas Matthew would go, See, 14 generations from Babylon to the Lord Jesus Christ. But our Bible only showed about 11 or 12 generations. And plus two, Joseph, Joseph was in the lineage of David. Here's the thing about him. Mary's uh, husband, Joseph, the scripture said Joseph been supposedly, supposedly to be the father of Jesus. They assumed he was the father of the Lord Jesus. Of Jesus. But he wasn't. We know that. Mm -hmm. No, God was his father. Right. And so when you track it down through the lineages there, you're not going to find it. Joseph was not his father, even though he came from the line of David. So how does that work? And he said, if, if, if it can't be proven that, if, it can't, if you can't prove that Jesus came through the lineage of David, then he doesn't qualify to be the Messiah. Because God promised it through David. Mm -hmm. And through this Bible, you can't prove it. So if you look at this Bible, you can't, he doesn't qualify to be the Messiah. Because this Bible doesn't show that he came through the lineage of David. But he tracked it down real good. And he said, and he's telling the truth, but we know that now. In, in those days, it wasn't, it wasn't a strange thing for a, a woman to marry a man that had the same name of a father. It had, we see it happening in our day. Children named after father and so forth. And even when John the Baptist was born, and they tried to name him Zachariah after his father, didn't they? Come on, Bible scholars. Yeah. <laughs> they tried to name him Zachariah after his father. And, and his mother said, not so. His name should be called John. Because the Lord told, the angel told her what to name him. They said, why? There's nobody in your family named Zach, uh, John. So it was, a, it was a common thing to have these same names. And, uh, you know, Zachariah wrote in the tablet, his name should be called John. He got his speech back. And but and so that was a common thing. So he tracked it down. He said, "Now Joseph came through the lineage of David. David, but Joseph came. I mean, jo his, uh, Joseph came through Nathan. David had two sons there. Well, he had several sons. But these two sons that we're going to deal with, we're going to deal with Nathan and Solomon. Both of those were sons of David, right? Amen. Y'all." Read your Bible? Yes. <laughs> Both of those were sons of David. Nathan the prophet, so forth. He was the son of David on this side. It's just like dad's got several sons. Me and uh, RJ or Daniel or whatever come through his lineage. He's got, and uh, 
Joseph came through the lineage of Nathan, who's the son of David. Mary came through the lineage of Solomon, which was the son of David. You see it? So even though Joseph wasn't his father, Mary was in the line of lineage of David. Still. Even though God was his father. So she received the seed from God. It's intact. I'm going to go on for a shot. He goes in detail with it, man. It's just, I said, boy, man, you got it. That's it. Right there. But I'm making a long story short. Can you see what I'm saying? Uh, Even though it wasn't Joseph or his father, and they were saying that he doesn't qualify uh, to be Messiah, but he proved out that Mary was Joseph, Mary's father, in that lineage was named Joseph. Mm. And Joseph, her husband, she married a man named Joseph. So that's just a common thing. But even though Joseph was not the father of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mary was still in the line of David, and the word of God was true. Yes. It came through David's seed line. Yeah. Amen. I don't ever do anything to you, but I just that just always <laughs> that just always interesting to me, you know. And so uh, I thought God is smart. Yes, he, does. <laughs> he, know, he know how to make you dig, don't he? <laughs> he knows how to make you. He's smart. He said it just the way it is. What's going to end up? Whether you understand it or not. That's right. But that's what's going to happen. I don't know why I said God got into that, but I did. What was I, what was I talking about before? <laughs> but anyway, you can see that now. Mary received the seed of God, the word of God, which came through the lineage of David. Mary did on the side of Solomon. Solomon had sons and all the way down to Mary. Nathan had sons and all the way down to Joseph. But they're all with the children of David. From the lineage of David. So he proved it out. He said he did he said he, he said he, after 17 years he couldn't take the money because he couldn't prove it by the by this Bible. He had to prove it another way. So a lot of times when you when you read stuff, I've heard Bible scholars say the King James Version leaves out a lot. And sometimes it mistranslates. So that's why you study different things right. to get the right picture. Like one time it said when when uh, when uh, Absalom came back to Jerusalem, got him the good good favors of his father. The King James would say how he won the hearts of the men of Israel. The King James would say he stood there at the gate for forty years and won the hearts of Israel. He couldn't stand that. For him, <laughs> he? That's a mistranslation. It, it should have been four years. It took him four years to do that. Politics, plenty of politics, kissing babies and all that kind of stuff. That's what he did. Shaking everybody's hand and kissing their babies. That's 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 a good, good start. It wouldn't have been going on for a long time. Amen. That's why I did it for four years. Until they won the hearts of the men of Israel. Yeah. And, and told told them, said, uh, my father doesn't care anything about y'all. If I was ruling, I would do this for you. I'd do that for you. He'd hug them and kiss their babies. They said, and all the hearts of the men of Israel went toward Absalom. That's what been David had to do some running. But back to what we're talking about. Um, <laughs> so you just you, you couldn't prove it out by the by the you couldn't prove it out by the King James Bible. But you, what happened was the King James was saying, if you track in Matthew, it would it would say uh this person, I, I can't remember all the names, because God kept 14 generations. It would say this person, that person, by the time you got to Mary, it was Twelve generations, or thirteen generations, and there's some left out, so you couldn't, it couldn't be proven. There were fourteen generations there. You, follow, you see what I'm saying? Until they tracked it down in, in other scriptures. Because you have to go back to Hebrew, to Arabic, to Greek, and then here. A lot can get lost in translation. Amen. And so that's why we study. That's why we study different translations and other things as much as we can. Now. Uh, where was I? What did I tell y'all to tell you last? Romans, John, what the, where was I? Romans chapter 9. Oh, I, I was dealing with the, uh, with the, uh, what was I talking about? Y'all know the. I 
Romans chapter 9 and 7, neither be called dead the seed of Abraham, are they all children? But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of, of the promise, or counted for the seed, for the children of God, the children of promise. So you're a child of promise. Now, back to, let's go back to John chapter 1, but I want to point out something here. In John chapter 1, in, anybody, uh, y'all, are y'all agree with that? Yeah. Okay. I'll do a better job explaining this. But John chapter 1 and verse 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Now we're hearing a whole lot about grace on TV in different places. People preach a lot of grace. I, I preach it. We preach it for years. Faith. Faith in what? Faith in his grace. And so, but we need to hear something about truth. He said grace and truth, not just grace, but grace and truth came with Jesus Christ. Yes. The law came with Moses. And we're hearing, like I said, we're hearing a whole lot about grace, but not too much about the rest of it. The grace and the truth. So we need to, we need to, we need to slip the truth in that. <laughs> slip, slip truth in that somewhere. We can go along with the grace. Now, because it's not just grace, it's truth too. So Jesus came preaching grace. The scripture said they wondered at his gracious words. His gracious word amazed them because they had never heard anything like that before. All they heard was law, law, law. Do this, do that, and you don't, and you get blessed, and don't you get killed. That's all they heard. Here comes a fellow along preaching grace. And, and they were amazed at his teaching. They said, he doesn't teach us like the one, like the Pharisees and scribes. He teaches us as one having authority and power. And grace has authority with it. And so the truth, truth. He came with the truth of God, telling people who God was and preaching the truth about God, the truth of who you are. That's what we're learning now. We, we, we have the grace, we live with grace, but we need to learn about the truth of who we are yes. and what he's done for us, yes. where he's placed us, yes. where he's put us, the truth in your mouth, Amen. Amen. the truth in your mouth. Yes. It's a fact that you're sitting there now. But the truth is, you ain't going to be sitting there all the time. <laughs> I just said that. <laughs> but anyway, we need, we, need to learn, we need to learn, let the truth speak to us. Paul, as Jesus did, he said, what is truth? That's right. Thomas said, I'm going in, you, in, in, in the way you know. So I'm leaving them in the way you know. And Thomas said, uh, uh, Philip, one of the guys, they said, uh, what is truth? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Look at John chapter 14. Just in John, just flip over chapter 14. Everybody got it? Amen. Say amen. Yeah. amen. Verse 5. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not, Jesus told him he was leaving, we know not where the God goes, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. No man. He's truth. What he said about you is truth. What he said, what he says to you is truth. Every word he said in here concerning you is, is the truth. Yes. It's not a lie. Amen. The devil wants you to believe his lies. When you start believing the devil's lies, you get in trouble. So why do you say that? Hold your spot right there. Hold that verse. <laughs> let me go to let me, let me go to Ephesians chapter six. This is important. Where you know Hold your spot right there. We're coming right back. Then I'm going to get out of here. Get out of your hair. <laughs> if you got stuff, you don't. I'm glad you skin. <laughs> Okay. All right, we got Ephesians chapter 6. Verse number 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. I told you how the Lord told me about the armor years ago. Hey, he raised me up in the bed, and I was back in the 70s. I never heard any teaching on the armor of God, how to wear it. I just, you know, just a little bit, but the Lord raised me up in the bed and started talking to me. And I sit there and listen to him go through the pieces of the armor. And tell me how to put it on. And he said it's all done by faith. Amen. You work by faith. Yes. 
Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wild and death. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against power. Let me, let, me, let me deal with that word stand. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. That word stand means, in, in one, one definition, it means to forbid. Forbid. Not just, a lot of times people think just stand means, you know, just standing. No, he's talking about fighting. Yes. Forbidding a certain action. Yes. Amen. Withstanding. Fighting back. Forcefully. Yes. Words in your mouth. Amen. Amen. Arming yourself with the truth. Yes. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand. In all in the evil day and having done all to stand, stand therefore. Now notice the first thing he tells you to do with this armor. The first when he starts describing this armor, what's the first piece he describes? Having your loins girded about with truth. That's that's one of the first thing he says to do. Wear a truth around your waist, like a belt. Have it on the belt of truth. Strap that belt on. Hold your britches up. Hold your dress tight. Yes. Yes. You can't do nothing with your britches down around your knees or ankles. Yes. You try to stand, you can't stand. You try to walk, you can't walk. You try to run, you can't run. You're tripping up and everything else. That's, right. That's why I said, gird yourself. Strap that belt of truth around your strong. Amen. Yes. It's like a belt. And I started thinking about a. I started thinking about a police officer. I remember my dad was a police officer. My sister was a police officer. Dad was the first African American police officer. She was the first African American woman police officer. A lot of people don't know that in this city. And I was a police officer in the military. I forgot about that. I was a, I was a military police officer. Come think of it. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, and we, 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 we strapped that, you strapped that belt on. You see a police officer today, he, he got that belt on, and all of his weapons is on hanging on that belt. Yes. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Huh? That's right. His gun, his taser, and sprayer, and everything else. <laughs> everything hanging on the belt. Strap, take the belt off, and what's he got? Mm. Huh? Right. If the devil can get the truth out of you, what have you got? That's right. It's a belt of truth. Yeah. That you're strapped on. That's that's what's holding you together. Yeah. That's what you that's what you're standing on. Amen. It acts as an armor. It's part of the armor of God. Is a belt that's strapped tight, yeah. and you're ready to fight. Yeah. And you wear it by faith. When you hear the word of truth, you put you believe that. When you believe it, and you put it in your mouth, you put that truth in your mouth, and you believe that you have just strapped your belt on. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Stand on. Now you're wearing your belt. Don't listen to the lies of the devil. He wants to take your belt off. If you start believing him, he's going to strip you of your belt. It's one of faith. I believe what the word of God says about me. Jesus taught them. They said, uh, uh, where are you going? How do we know the way? He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The truth. He is the truth. He doesn't just have truth, he is truth. Amen. And he's all of it. When you got him, you got it. Amen. 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 That's what the first thing he tells you to do with this arm. He said, you strap on the belt of truth. When you get up in the morning, you put that belt on, strap the belt on. And, and believe what the word says. Amen. And when the enemy hits you, when he, when he hits you, you just don't, you stand, you stand with the word of the truth. Just what you're standing on, you're standing on the truth. Amen. Amen. I don't care what you're dealing with. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what your body tells you. The truth says by his stripes you're healed. Yes. That's the truth. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. The truth said you're more than a conqueror. Yes. That's the truth. The problem is the devil steals the truth from us. Next thing you know, you just, uh, well, you just took off your belt. That's good. You just took your belt off. Mm, some of the most important thing, some of the most important pieces of that armor, all of us important. The scripture says, above all, taking the shield of faith, because you wear it for faith, yeah. above everything. Yeah. Right. And, and it, but all is important. But when you take that, but, but when you look at that, even even if you look at the policeman in the natural, he look like he weighs three hundred pounds. That big old breast protector on, mm -hmm. bulletproof vest. 
It's called the breast of plate of righteousness. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the, basically the only thing that's protected. Right. Isn't it? Yeah. When you look at it, that's the only thing that's protected. Mm -hmm. Is that righteousness, that righteous consciousness. Amen. If he can steal your, if he can steal your consciousness of who you are in Christ Jesus, he just took your breastplate off. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, that's right. Teach. Now you don't have a breastplate. Mm -hmm. Now you're open for all the white, fiery darts of the enemy. Mm -hmm. He can, he can hit you. Right. Just like a policeman gets shot. If you don't have that, if you don't have a breast protector on, he, he can get hurt real bad. Mm -hmm. If not keep on. And the enemy kills a lot of a lot of saints that don't have a breast protector. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's good. That don't have their belt on. Mm -hmm. And the breastplate. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. All right. I'm not gonna deal with all the pieces of the army, but this, I was going we deal with that tonight. The truth. Amen. Don't believe a lie. Amen. Amen. I don't care where it comes from. It can come from well meaning Christians. Don't believe it. Amen. Amen. If, Amen. If, if it causes division and problems and it doesn't set to do with you, don't believe it. Amen. Don't listen to it. That's right. That's, that's the enemy, the trick of the enemy to take your belt off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 I don't care what kind of lie he tells you about you, don't believe it. When you believe it, you're without a belt. Mm -hmm. right. you're, you're, you're without it. That's right. That's why you have to keep it in your mouth. Yes. And the way you fight back, when he hits you with a lie, you fight back with the heaven, with the word of truth. Amen. The Amen. word of truth. Amen. What does the truth say? Amen. What does the word say? Amen. That's the truth. Amen. About Amen. your situation Amen. and about your life yes. and about everything else, that is the truth. What Jesus said about you is the yes. truth. Yes. Amen. And he came with grace and truth. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Grace and truth. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. When you tap into the grace, it's through the truth. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 That's the way you that's the way you tap into his grace is by speaking the truth, acting on the truth, believing the truth that causes the grace to come. He came with grace and truth. He came with the truth about the Father God. They were believing all kinds of things about God. But Jesus came and exposed the devil and exposed what God is, who God is, yes. and who who not who they thought God was. Mm -hmm. I told you before that the Bible line of the Bible was John chapter 10. The thief come to steal, kill, destroy. Jesus said, I come to give you life and life more abundant. Amen. That is the truth. Amen. That's why he came. He didn't come, he didn't come to hurt you. He said, the thoughts I have to you is good. Good thoughts. Amen. Amen. Good thoughts. Mm -hmm. Thoughts to bring you an expected end. Mm -hmm. Thoughts to lift you up. Yeah. Gracious thoughts. Yeah. So he takes you, you put the you put the grace and the truth together, and now you got a ooh, you got double action. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> you don't believe a lie and let the grace and the truth work for you. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Now you're on your way. There's a whole lot more to that, but we're not I'm quitting. Because I said I'm going to be short tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all out there? Yes. Okay. I thought that might, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'll shoot the quits or something. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The truth about you, the truth about your brothers and sisters, the truth about everything you're going through, there is a truth to every situation. The scripture that he has abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence and understanding. Amen. There's an answer to everything you're dealing with. Yes. Amen. And it's concerning truth and it's truth. Amen. Not a lie. Lord, yes. Amen. There's a promise to everything you do. God abounded toward you in all wisdom. Your situation is not without an answer. Amen. <laughs> Your problem is not without an answer. Amen. That's right. It's got to find it. Amen. And then stand on it. And gird yourself with righteous consciousness and the truth of God. Amen. God's word. And you'll be, you'll be doing good. Amen. Amen. All right, let's stand. Praise the Lord. Are you all right? Amen. I mean, you got your belt on. Praise. Hallelujah. Praise. Hallelujah. So, so, so quit worrying about that. Uh, 
performance stuff. Yeah. You're, you're not under, you never was under that cover, so forget it. Amen. Yeah. There's things in it that we can use for the simple reason if it's good. The scripture said we have a better covenant, so it has to include that. But that covenant was not given to us. We didn't even have a covenant. That's right. Not just us, I mean the people back then. They were strangers from the covenants of promise. Amen. But God, in his wisdom, has included all. Thank God for that. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight. We give you praise in Jesus' name. For in letting us in, for adopting us and bringing us into the covenant of God. I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you so much. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.